My name is Jeff Cowan. I'm a president at Building and Earth Sciences. I've been uh, working in this field since 1983, and we started uh, Building and Earth about 20 years ago. January will be 20 years ago. We're a geotechnical firm. We provide geotechnical exploration services as well as construction materials testing. We do some environmental work also. The geotechnical exploration and reporting part of our services is important because it, it helps identify the conditions that are present at a site that need to be considered during, during the design, both from a civil construction standpoint, whether you have uh, shallow rock or unsuitable soils that need to be dealt with as part of the site grading and also the foundation. We have to identify the proper foundation system to use for a building. But here at the Vestas site, we're underlain by uh, limestone and uh, contact with a dolomite formation. In the Birmingham area where you have these contacts, a lot of times you have a, a zone where you have very weak rock, deep rock. As we moved up into this part of the site, we've got the, the parking deck in the mid-rise. You, you, you reach the, the geologic contact, and some of the deep foundations in this area had to go as much as 70, 75 feet deep. Understanding these conditions is what is really important when you start a job like this because uh, it, it has a great cost impact. So it's very important that, that you verify that you're down to the, the rock that you expect it to be. But once we have the foundations in, we're satisfied that they meet the design parameters and that's when testing and verification and special inspection part of our work starts over. This morning, Manny's gonna make cylinders for the concrete columns that go from the 11th to the 12th floor. And after each floor is placed, we'll also uh, verify that the post-tensioning cables are, are stressed appropriately. Manny's our, our lead technician on the project. He's been handling it. How long have you been out here now? Uh, since September. All right, this is what we do. We get our sample, we bring it back to our testing area, we do our slump, air, temperature, and make our cylinders. On this one here in particular, it, what we did was we did a slump, three levels. We do not want to bump the slump. Rod it 25 times, strike it off, pull our cone up slowly, and then we'll measure with our tape measure. And this particular sample didn't meet our specifications, so we let the harbor know, and they end up sending the truck back. So what they have to do now is we order more concrete, and when that truck's come, we'll do the same thing to it, make sure that was inspected. And what we have here is our air test. We do it after we do our slump, measure the entrapped air inside the concrete. This mix here is supposed to be four to six. We do it the same way we do the slump. The only difference is we tap this each layer. Brought it 25 times, tap it 12 to 15 times. Each layer, that's the only difference. And then, once we finish, we'll put our lid on top of it and we'll put our air in it and just shoot through, get all the bubbles, the air bubbles out of the concrete, and then we'll pump it up to our initial reading. And then once we get there, we'll close our pet cocks. And so in this one, it was four to six, and it's actually 5.5, so it's within spec. That's good. All right, now what we're doing now is making our cylinders, which is the final step of the testing process. And we, these are samples, we take to the office and we'll break, make sure they meet the required PSI. We break them at seven and 28 days, and by 28 days, they have to reach the required PSI. Put our lid on it. We'll move it to our space that we're gonna leave and let it cure. And once we do that, we'll let it cure, like I said, 24 to 48 hours. And we'll come pick it up, take it to our lab, and put it in a curing tank. And we'll let it sit for seven days, and then we'll break it and see what our PSI is on. All right, this concludes our field section of testing the concrete. Maybe next time I see you, I'll show you the fun part when you actually get to break these bad boys. Hey, my name's Emmanuel. I've been working for Building Earth two and a half years. Hey, welcome to Building and Earth. This is the 12th floor, 17th floor. It is the amenities deck where we have the, the pool and the amenities on top. And then the 18th floor is the roof deck. So we're on 12, it'll be six more. The third floor up to the 16th floor are all typical floors. They're all the same thing. And critical being able to keep, keep stay on schedule it's like when we pour a slab, three days later, we get our concrete breaks on it. And that's, we get the concrete breaks from building earth. We're able to pull the cables, get the report, get it to the engineers, hopefully have it, have it approved that day. And if that happens, then we're able to pick up time on the schedule. Yeah, Emmanuel, he's one of the key guys doing our testing out here with, uh, with the dirt, the backfill, make sure everything's in compaction. Uh, he's on just about every uh, concrete test that we do out here. He does all the cylinders. 
Uh, like I said, if he does uh, one cylinder, he's done 5,000 cylinders out here. But he stays in touch with us, lets us know the slump, air content, make sure it's the right concrete and uh, the right mix before we put it in place. It's been uh, a real asset to have them on the job with our post tensioning, our subsurface, our concrete testing. Uh, everything that they do is top notch and number one. And uh, I, would, I would definitely love to have them on any project that I do. So part of our special inspections requirement on, on the Vesta project here is to verify that the uh, reinforcing steel is placed according to plan. So you can see here, uh, we've had steel going both ways. Also part of that is verifying that the post tension cables are placed as the structural engineer design. So here again, you see them going, going both ways. They'll bed head against the edge of the slab after it's poured, and after the concrete reach, reaches strength, then they'll come back and tension the cables. So that's what uh, Greg was talking about, uh, to get an early break sometimes uh, so they can know when the concrete reaches sufficient strength to go ahead and, and tension the cables. My name is Pearson Holt. I work with Building and Earth Sciences as a field engineer. We're out here in Fountain Heights drilling for uh, road improvements, new traffic lights, new light poles, and a raised median in the middle. So Lee and Terry behind me are currently sampling soil. We sample every couple feet, and what, what is going on right now, that's a hammer, it's a weight, it's a 140 pound weight, and we know how far it drops, so we can reference that to how hard or soft the soil is. Give them, the structural guys, a report, and that'll base their foundation design off our report. So this rig is a CME 75, and what we have are hollow stem augers. The hollow stem, they're hollow in the middle, so we drill down to the depth we desire, and then we put a rod in it, a spoon, it's called a split spoon, and we put the hammer on top of it and count how many blows per six inches, and we come up with the end number from that. For roadways, it's different. You can get away with softer soils depending on the traffic. Maybe in a parking lot, it can be softer. Depending on how much weight's going on these light poles and how big they are, we usually stop somewhere eight to 12 is pretty good soils for these. And that's kind of how it always depends. Every, every area you drill is a little different, depending on, even if you're in the same formation. It's not boring, but it's boring. Every day's an adventure at Building and Earth Sciences. All projects that we work on will have some level of earthwork required. Some may last even as little as a week, others may be a couple of years. The project that we're on today is a residential project and earthwork on it lasted about two years. We started it in 2016. Uh, it was an earth moving project. Um, we designed this dam we're standing on as well as monitored the construction of it. Uh, there's two other dams here similar to this one on this project. Uh, it's impounding about 100 acres of lake for a subdivision. Uh, we monitored all the fill that was placed, uh, each lift as it came up, um, as well as the soil types. You know, we built a core as well as um, shells for the dam, and all that was monitored um, by our field technicians. All right, this project's nearly complete. Uh, in a second, we'll take you over to another project that's just getting started, where you'll meet Liam, who is our engineering technician and is monitoring fill placement and compaction on that project. So my name's Liam Crowley. I've been with Building and Earth now for two and a half years. I'm an engineering technician. Basically, I'm on site when they're doing the active work, monitoring the soil compaction, grabbing density tests. Um, and so basically, I was just gonna run through what I do when I get out on site. So in order to grab a test and everything, the first thing we have to do is get us a nice smooth spot. You wanna make sure there's not a lot of voids in there. That way you get an accurate reading. Um, and then depending on the lift size, you have to make sure you drive the pin in enough, deep enough to get a test that tests through the entire lift. So then after driving the stake down to the six inch mark, you take the nuclear gauge, you line it up over the hole, and you drop it down to six inches. 
you set the depth to six inches. And then you have to, if you could, just step away because it's got nuclear material. So we recommend that you stay without 15, about 15 feet away from the gauge at all times when it's running. And so then we have a list of proctors because before I even get out here, they've generally drilled the site, gathered the different soils, and they give, have given me a list that I can match it up to to make sure it, you know, it is compacted as compared to the proctor. So yeah, so working with Building and Earth has been really great. Um, I started working with them right out of college. Um, my buddy got a job there and they offer a recruitment bonus, which brought me in and everything. Um, I had majored in geography and environmental science at Alabama and really didn't know where to go with that field and found this opportunity really um, productive to my professional development. I've gotten numerous certifications. Um, that's not in only increased my take home pay, but also they offered bonus incentive incentives for the, this. At the same time, I really enjoy what I'm doing. Um, I'm outside the majority of the day. It's a company that provides really good benefits. You get paid, you, you're taken care of very well. Um, and it's a company that you truly have the feeling that they care about you. They're concerned with your health, with your safety. They want to empower you to make choices that if you don't feel comfortable doing something, you don't have to do it. It's nice to work for a company that really cares about the employees, their safety, their well-being. Um, and I, I really enjoy that about the company. So we've shared with you today some about what we do out here in the field for quality control during earth work. And we'd like to educate all of you about the, the services that we do. We have a lot of ty different types of jobs available here at Building and Earth, a lot of different field activities that go on, and I really hope you consider coming to join us at Building and Earth Sciences.